Hey folks, I'm Pat Schloss and this is Code Club. If you've been watching the past 30 episodes of Code Club, you know that I have been doing a deep dive, really digging into COVID-19 vaccination data. We started by looking at data from Ipsos, where we've looked at a variety of ways to represent data indicating people's preference or intention to receive the COVID-19 vaccine back in August and October of 2020, so a year ago as I'm recording this. Fast forward, we now are in 2021. The vaccine is available. Hopefully, like me, you've been able to get vaccinated. Um, and what we now have is data for the 15 countries that were surveyed in 2020 to see whether or not people were actually able to get vaccinated in those 15 different countries. And so the question I've been grappling with over the past couple episodes is how did people's intention relate to whether or not they're actually able to get the vaccine. It's one thing to say, I want to get the vaccine. It's another thing to actually go out and get the poke in your arm uh, to get vaccinated. And of course, there's political reasons why in some countries or in some places, people might not be able to get a vaccine. And then there's political things like here in the United States, where people think that vaccination is a partisan issue, which is just the stupidest thing in the world. Anyway, like I said, I hope you're vaccinated. Um, I am relieved in some ways that I am vaccinated as well. In the last episode, I showed you four different ways using ggplot that we could represent the same data set. And I came upon two different types of visuals that I thought did a pretty nice job of telling a story about the discrepancy for some countries between people's intention to get the vaccine and whether or not they actually got the vaccine. The first plot that I was interested in following up on is really a dumbbell plot that I converted to show an arrow instead of the dumbbell. The arrowhead end of the line is where we're at today and whether or not people actually received the vaccine, whereas the other end is the percentage of people in each of the 15 countries that indicated whether or not they wanted to receive the vaccine. Uh, the other plot that I was interested in displaying with this is called a dot plot. And the dot plot that we're going to make shows the difference in people's ability or actual getting the vaccine compared to their stated intention to get the vaccine. I like the dot plot because instead of asking my audience to visually calculate what's going on in that arrow, I'm showing them the actual number, right? I'm plotting that point. And so the, the dot plot shows the difference between intention and realized vaccination, whereas the arrow plot, as we'll call it, shows the actual intention and actual vaccination rates. So I want to move those forward. And today I'm going to make a polished figure that I will take the two figures, combine them together using a package called Patchwork, which we actually talked about in a previous episode. We'll put it all together, we'll make it look nice, and I'll, I'll introduce a few other concepts about Patchwork that maybe I haven't talked about in previous episodes. And I think in the end, we'll have a figure that I'll be pretty happy with, and hopefully you'll agree that it's a pretty effective way to convey a message about the discrepancy between whether or not people have actually been able to get vaccinated when they stated that they wanted to get vaccinated. I'm here in our studio with my comparison figured out R script. If you wanna get this script, as well as all of the back history of this project, down below in the description, there's a link to a blog post that will take you to GitHub where you can get the entire repository. Um, we've been working with this under version control. So again, we read the data in from our world in data. This contains the actual percentage of people in each country as of the end of October that were fully vaccinated. We also have data from Ipsos looking at people's stated intention uh, to receive the vaccine from August and October of 2020. We then joined it all together. And then, as I said in the last episode, I looked at four different ways of visualizing the data. I'm gonna go ahead and join all the data together, get that read in. The resulting data frame, Ipsos OID, uh, contains the 15 different countries, their vaccination rates, and their intention to receive vaccination rates. Now, I am interested in the dot plot as well as the dumbbell chart. And so I'm gonna go ahead for now and delete these other uh, code chunks for building out those other figures just because they're kind of in the way. So now I've got my dot plot and my dumbbell chart. So to remind you what the dumbbell plot looked like, again, we have ordered the countries by the difference between their current vaccination rate and their stated intention to get vaccinated rate. So India was large discrepancy, whereas Spain actually got vaccinated at a higher rate than they stated they wanted to. Uh, so that's the dot plot. If we look at the arrow plot, and you can see we've got these arrows 
pointing the direction from 2020 to 2021. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and reorder all of the countries in my Ipsos OID by their difference rate, right? And so here in dot plot, I actually had done that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out of here and tack that on to the end of this pipeline and load that. And then if I look at my dot plot, that's in the right order. And then my dumbbell plot, that's also in the correct order now as well, where we have the biggest difference, biggest negative difference at the top and the, the biggest positive difference at the bottom. Go ahead and clean some of this up. So now I'm ready to combine these plots with each other. To do that, I am going to start by naming the plot to a variable. So I'll call this dot, and then this one I'll call um, dumbbell. And so I have dot and dumbbell. Right? So you can assign a plot to a variable name, and then you can do all sorts of things. You can add things onto the plot. Uh, as we'll see with Patchwork, you can actually add the plots together. So to use Patchwork, I'm gonna come way back up here and I'll do library Patchwork. One of the cool things about Patchwork is that I can use addition to add two plots to each other. So we'll do dot plus dumbbell. We then get our two figures arrayed side by side with each other. Um, again, we'll do some cleaning up here. I think I prefer this side by side uh, perspective because I can put countries on the Y axis and then have two different variables plotted on the X axis, right? Alternatively, if we wanted to um, make it a uh, top and bottom, then we could use dot divided by dumbbell. And that would put dot at the top and dumbbell at the bottom. As I said, I wanna use the same Y axis. So I'm gonna go back and use the plus sign to add these to each other. We're gonna make this look a lot better. And along the way, we're gonna learn a little bit more about patchwork and we'll kind of review some of the concepts about using themes uh, to make it look a bit more polished. So something I wanna emphasize is that dot and dumbbell are each variables. And just as like we normally think of a variable like Ipsos or OID as data frames, representing data frames, uh, dot and dumbbell represent figures. They represent plots. And so we're adding them to each other. They actually all have their own styling. So I can add to this theme classic. So what we see when we add theme classic is that it's applying theme classic to dumbbell, the last plotting object, right? It's not also adding it to dot. And so this is something that I think is a common problem that I know I've had using patchwork is that I really wanna get my two figures looking well on their own <laughs> um, and then join them together and then add any extra formatting to the overall plotting window using annotations that you can do with patchwork. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this theme classic from the end of that addition. And I'm gonna put that at the end of each of these other pipelines. And so again, we'll load these. So now what we see is that we have theme classic applied to both the dot plot and the dumbbell plot. And again, the difference is that we put theme classic at the end of each of the code chunks for building those plots rather than at the end of building the combined figure. As I mentioned, we're gonna to wanna to format the two figures individually, and, and we'll come back and do more of that here in a moment, but we'll also want to add attributes or labels or annotations to the overall figure, the combined figure, right? So one question you might ask yourself is where would we put the title? So, you know, we might think about doing labs, title equals, uh, let's do countries are not meeting their people's stated desire to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. So again, as we saw with theme classic, that's only adding the title to the second plot, to the dumbbell plot. What we want is for that title to be applied to the entire composite figure. So instead of labs, what we want to use is plot underscore annotation. That then gives us the title going all the way across the figure. And in our case, it's going way across the figure. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and save this to a file. So we'll do gg save comparison figure dot tiff width equals six height equals four. I prefer to use gg save to do the fine tuning of my figures rather than the plot panel in our studio because I want to set the dimensions. And if you change the dimensions, then you're going to change the way things look when you finally export things from our studio. And so I prefer to do it in the format, in the size of the document that I finally want to use in, as a publication or tweeting out or who knows what I want to do with it, right? 
All right, so again, we have our title going all the way across, and we see that it goes off the right end of the screen. And so I would like to apply some theming using something like Element Text Box Simple from ggtext to get that to wrap and maybe change the font and some other things. So let's go back up to our libraries, and I'm going to do library ggtext so that I can bring in um, Element Text Box Simple, Element Markdown, which allows me to insert Markdown and HTML and some other nice features into the text elements of uh, my figures and making the theming look that much nicer. So we have this plot annotation with the title. To theme our title, we give plot annotation the theme argument, and then we to that we give the theme function. And in here, I can then say plot.title element text box simple. Uh, so let's run with that and just make sure everything works. And now we see that we get our title to wrap, which is again one of the nice features of element text box simple. Uh, we could of course add to this, we could say like size equals 20, face equals bold. So now we have our larger font, it's bolded and it's automatically wrapping, all because we gave plot annotation the theme argument and the theme argument then takes the theme function. If I would have added theme out here, right? Uh, if I'd have done like plot dot uh, title equals element text color equals red, um, that's not going to change anything, right? Um, that is only going to change the title of my second figure, right? And so we need to set the theme inside plot annotation, again, by assigning that to the theme argument of plot annotation. In our figure, Patchwork took dot and dumbbell, added them together, and it gave them the same width. But maybe I don't want them to be the same width. I would actually like that the dot plot to be a little bit more narrow than the arrowed dumbbell plot. So how do we do that? We can add to plot annotation, plot layout. And then we can say width, widths, and then we give it a vector of relative widths, right? So I could do one and two, and that makes the dot plot half the width of uh, the, the arrowed plot, right? So we're going to be changing things a little bit, right? We're going to be getting rid of these country names. So that's going to expand a little bit. So I think what I want to do is make my dot plot a little bit wider. So maybe I'll do two and three. And as always, we can always come back and fiddle with things later. But know that you can change the widths of your figures. Also, if we had instead stacked them, right? So if I do dot forward slash dumbbell, I could then do heights instead of widths. And so the top plot is two units and the bottom is three. Of course, this looks horrible. So I'll go back to putting them side by side and using widths. So there's a few things I wanna to do to this figure to make it look more polished and more presentable. The first thing I'm going to do is change the labels that I have on the X axis. Again, for both of those, we need to go back to the pipeline creating those figures. And so here I can come back for dot and do labs and I will do X equals difference between actual and intended vaccination rate. And then I'll also do y equals null because I don't need it to say country. And I'm gonna guess and put in a line break right about there. And then for my dumbbell plot, I'll do the same thing where I'll come in and do labs, x equals 2020 intended and 2021 actual vaccination rates. And again, guess the middle point right about there. And we'll also do y equals null for that and add that. And so here we have our titles for our x axes. Um, I'm not going to get too worried right now about the title I have on the x axis for the dot plot because I think things are going to move around. Um, we might come back and change the font so um, I'm not getting this truncation on the right side of the title. Yeah, so the next thing I want to do is let's go ahead and remove these country names. And actually, I want to remove the entire y-axis from uh, this dumbbell chart. And to do that, we'll come back up here and we'll do a fair amount with the theme function. So I'll do axis.text.y equals element blank. Basically going to make a lot of things element blank. Axis.title.y equals element blank. I don't have a title there anyway, but eh, whatever axis.ticks.y equals element blank. I've got an extra period in there. And then let's also do axis.line.y equals element blank. 
And so that then gets rid of that Y axis and brings them together. And I think something that would really help my audience to connect the dots, if you will, all the way across is putting in a grid line for each of the countries. To get that grid line, I'm gonna come back up to my dot plot, do geom H line with Y intercept equals country. And that needs to be in an aesthetic uh, function because we're mapping country to the intercept. And then I'll do color equals uh, gray, size equals 0 0.25. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy this because I want the same grid lines down here with my dumbbell plot. So I'll go ahead and load all this. Yeah, and so now we have the grid lines that show the connection for India all the way across, for Germany all the way across. And I think that looks pretty nice. Um, I also see that because we now have more spacing, uh, that the right side of my title here isn't getting truncated. One thing that we did with the Ipsos data before was to abbreviate some of these country names, right? So like United Kingdom could be UK, South Korea could be S Korea, United States could be USA. So let's go back into our code and see if we can't recode those so that we have a more abbreviated name. So here in Ipsos OID, I'm gonna go ahead and we will do a country equals recode on country. And we're gonna give it the current name and the new name. So we'll say like United States equals USA. So let's run this just to make sure it all works. And so sure enough, we see that we, the United States is now USA. So let's do that with the other countries. United Kingdom equals UK, South Korea equals S Korea, South Africa equals S Africa, and that should be good. So we've got those abbreviated names. One little thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove those tick marks because I think they're just too bold uh, considering the grid line right next to them. I think the grid line kind of acts like a tick mark already. So again, because that was part of the dot plot, I need to use the theme function attached to dot to remove that. So we'll do theme and we'll do axis.ticks.y equals element blank. And that gets rid of those tick marks. The final thing that I wanna do is I wanna change my fonts. I wanna make my title font Patrua one and I'll make everything else Montserrat so it doesn't scream <laughs> default fonts. And because I think that was one of the cool things that we figured out how to do in this series of videos is how to use fonts from Google Fonts to spice up the appearance of our figure. So we'll come back up here and add the library show text and we'll do font add Google and we'll do Patua one comma Patua one. So this is Patrua hyphen one is the name of the font family that we'll be using. And what this is saying is add the Patrua one font from Google fonts. Uh, we could make that more explicit by saying family equals Patrua one. And then we could do font add Google family equals Montserrat and then Montserrat. So I'll go ahead and run the library and those font add Googles so that we can use these fonts with the current session. We'll then do show text auto. So I'm gonna to add to the theme function for the dot plot. I'll do text equals element text. And I'll say family equals Montserrat. And then get that. And I think we've got the right parentheses, yep. And then for the dumbbell plot, we'll do the same thing. I'll do text equals element text family equals Montserrat, right? And so now that takes care of like all of the text elements of the two figures, but I also wanna use that Patrua one for the title, right? And so here to my element text box simple, I could add family equals Patrua one. And let's give this all a run and see what the final product looks like. Very nice. We've got our custom fonts in here. One thing I'm noticing is that the Montserrat font has a little bit more space to it than the default Arial that we get uh, with normal ggplot. And so what I'm seeing is that I'm losing the rates um, on my title here. And so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna make the x-axis titles a little bit smaller. So I'll come back up and we will add to our dot plot axis.title.x element text. And I'll do size equals 10. And I'll need a comma there. 
And I'm going to copy this same uh, theme option down below for my dumbbell plot. So I want those titles to be the same size. We'll go ahead and make get that loaded. Yeah, so now those axis titles fit and they look pretty attractive. One final thing, there's always something, isn't there? I'd, I'd like to have a 20 um, on the X axis of the dot plot here, because uh, it just seems like these are hanging out in like the nothingness. Again, we can come back up to our dot plot and I will add to this a scale X continuous. So we'll do limits equals NA to 20. So the NA says, uh, scale X continuous, your algorithm, you figure out what is the appropriate lower end, but I want you to use 20 as the upper limit. And then we can do breaks. And I'm going to use the seek function. And I don't necessarily know what breaks I'm gonna use. I, I know I want them every 20, but I don't know what that lower end is, right? And so I can use seek to go from minus 100 to 20 by 20s. And so that should then give me breaks every, every 20 percentage points. We now have that positive 20 value on the x-axis, which gives pretty good bounds on the difference between actual and intended vaccination rates. And I'm really happy with the way this looks. Um, I really appreciate you uh, sticking out this series with me. I'm sure some of you are like, man, Pat is still talking about this data set. But you know what? I've learned a lot in going through these 30 episodes and thinking about how we can represent the data, how we can you know, work with the data to get it into a format that we can make attractive visuals, how we can make things look a little bit different than they might normally. Um, I hope you like this version of the figure. Uh, I am positive that if you had to do it, you'd come up with something different, right? And that is A-OK. -okay. And in fact, what I'd love for you to do is feel free to tweet at me your version of this figure. You know, maybe you picked a different combination of figures, different pairing of figures, to tell this story. That's awesome. Tweet it at me. Let me let me see what you've done, um, and we can continue the conversation over on Twitter. Of course, feel free to leave any other comments that you have um, down below in the comments of this video. So please practice with this, and we'll see you next time for something new uh, here on Code Club.